Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul and in this Rick Game to the video we're going to be discussing today's big piece of news. Intel have officially confirmed that Raja Kudori has indeed joined the company. His position will be the Chief Architect, Senior Vice President of the newly formed Core and Visual Computing Group, along with being the General Manager of a new initiative to drive edge computing solutions. According to Intel, in this position, Kodori will expand Intel's leading position in integrated graphics for PC market with high-end discrete graphic solutions for a broad range of computing segments. And also according to Intel, we have exciting plans to aggressively expand our computing and graphics capabilities and build on our very strong and broad differentiated IP foundation. With Raja at the helm of our core and visual computing group, we will add to our portfolio of unmatched capabilities, advance our strategy to lead in computing and graphics, and ultimately be the driving force for data revolution. End quote. <clears throat> right, well, I'm just going to let that sink in for a second. But just to add, Kodori will be officially starting his new role in December of, of course, this year. So, for those who weren't familiar... Kodori previously was working for RTG, Radeon Technologies Group, and serving as the senior architect there, as well as the man in charge, so to speak, of the graphics division. Obviously, he was still reporting to Lisa Sue, but a lot of the autonomy of RTG was really down to his discretion. In other words, he could pretty much run the company within some reason, of course, however he would like. Immediately after this news had popped up, People have started, of course, speculating why Raja has left. Now, I want to tell you something straight. Honestly, no one other than Raja, other than Intel, possibly, and AMD themselves know the reason for his departure. Another thing we need to clear up is that Intel have a pretty big R&D budget. Um, I'm shocking you here, but it's a bit bigger than AMD's. But that doesn't mean much. And I don't mean that in a disrespectful way to either Raja or Intel, but you can't just suddenly create an architecture by just saying, okay, done. That was me snapping my fingers. I have no idea if that came out properly on the mic. But it doesn't work like that. It doesn't take a few weeks. It doesn't take a few months. It doesn't take six months or 12 months. It can take several years of development. The reason I bring that up is because AMD and NVIDIA are not suddenly going to have a competitor in this you know next couple of years another thing that we need to clear up as well is it's most likely going to be an entire new architecture just from the verbiage of the pr statement and the second reason and probably the most obvious is the actual architecture itself intel are currently using for its igps i'm not criticizing them for what they do they're pretty decent but scalability and efficiency reasons especially for compute scenarios it's probably not the architecture they're going to want to use. Obviously, we've seen them shift a lot of their focus to compute anyway with our friend and the buddy of Nirvana. So it would make sense for Raja to kind of take that technology, take the best bits of that technology, and perhaps create something new. There are multiple questions, however, that we have still remaining. I'm going to put a straw poll in the description of this video because I want to know your reasons for thinking that Raja has left. I'm kind of curious. There are uh, several reasons he could have left and then we're going to start going into what Intel could probably be doing. The first reason is that Lisa Su slash the board slash AMD in general were not happy with Raja which really could be segmented into two separate reasons. The first is that they weren't satisfied with his performance. The second is they weren't satisfied with his vision. I'm going to dismiss the performance one because Polaris as a whole hit the targets that AMD had and Vega was not Raja's fault and it is not a bad architecture. Some people think, you know, Vega sucks. It doesn't. Vega 56 in particular is pretty popular and honestly, even if Vega had been an awful architecture, which it wasn't, it was not Raja who designed this architecture. Instead, he will be most judged, I suppose, in terms of what he did at AMD for Navi. Although, arguably, how far Navi is along in development, I'm assuming at the very least 
the design is pretty much finalized so they probably know the amount of you know compute units and how much ram roughly they're going to have and the rough target of performance but i suspect there's still a few bugs here and there that they're ironing out and they probably haven't finished the exact product roadmap regardless Raja was really instrumental in that the other theory is that he just wasn't happy <coughs> with the idea of losing some of the autonomy of RTG slash his vision no longer coincided with Lisa Sue. This is certainly possible. Once again, unfortunately, without being a you know fly on the wall of the offices during his uh, sabbatical, we won't know that. Another possibility is... He just feels like he's done what he could at AMD. Which is... I wouldn't agree that he has done everything by any stretch of the imagination. But he may be feeling like... You know what? I've got a limited budget here. Um, we need one architecture. Because AMD's limited budget essentially means that they needed to design an architecture which could have multiple usage scenarios. So he might feel... <coughs> you know, I if I went to intel i can probably make a bigger difference in the tech world the man is is uh, 49 about to say 59 49 years old he's got 25 years of experience he's at the point now where he's not retiring or anything like that but at essentially 50 years old he's been with it enough to where he just probably wants a company now to <coughs> kind of settle in uh maybe have a good five ten year run and then probably just relax and enjoy you know his retirement because obviously he's going to be a fairly affluent individual so if he was to work another five ten years he's going to have a pretty good nest egg he probably would have felt like he contributed enough to the industry and he probably has enough uh you know wherewithal to say you know what i've had enough stress i've had enough uh you know a time away from my family and all of this stuff and i kind of just want to get along with you know life as a whole and you know travel the world and do whatever you know, visit the Egyptian pyramids or whatever the hell he wants to do, I don't know. The other reason, and this is probably highly debated, but the timing of his departure from AMD, specifically when AMD and Intel are, well, essentially becoming partners when they're creating this new processor, um, it, it's not lost on a lot of people. Now, there's one of two ways you can interpret this. One, it is completely coinky dink. The second is that this was kind of just a deal. So Intel said, hey, we want someone to help kickstart our graphics technology. We can license some of this technology maybe from AMD. Um, and Raja said, hey, this would work. I want to, you know, kind of have my own thing and run with it. AMD are kind of more integrating RTG again with their with their broader business strategies. Of course, one could argue that AMD would be shooting themselves in the foot here, but I the only reason that I'm more inclined to believe that it's amicable is either he really pissed off someone at AMD and they just wanted to oust him, B, he is leaving for the purpose of essentially kickstarting some of AMD and obviously he's going to be under some levels of NDA anyway so it's it's very curious because this is this is not like uh you know someone leaving from AMD to let's say go work at Tesla or even what he'd done previously remember uh before he was working at AMD Kodori was the director of graphics architectures at Apple and uh, he helped establish graphics subsystem for the Mac as well as the retina computer displays. Now, arguably, there's not really a a huge crossover there. I mean, obviously, AMD now are even providing computer parts for Apple, so it's not the same thing at all. It's just it's a very weird move, and quite frankly, I don't think any of us are really going to ever know why he is doing this. And I, I do feel that the sabbatical. There was one of two things that was going to happen when he came back, or if he was to come back. One, he was not going to come back at all, which is obviously the way this went. Or two, he was kind of just reflecting on things, and essentially it was a, a very corporate slash PR way of just saying, 
yeah, when you come back, you're going to have different responsibilities. And it was, you know, it was just, a, it, the whole thing has just been a bit weird. I guess the other way to look at this as well is what could AMD um, fear from Intel? What will Intel be doing? Honestly, I feel that Intel have less uh, desire to hurt AMD. And I know this is going to sound crazy, but in the graphics technology arena, Intel are probably not going after AMD as much as they are NVIDIA. Now, NVIDIA and AMD and Intel have never been exactly bestest buddies with one another, but recently Intel want a bigger slice of the compute oriented pie. And this is just how it is. My opinion is that yes, we'll probably be seeing graphics technology which will, of course, filter into desktops, which, of course, will filter into CPU, um, into their own CPUs, and, of course, will likely uh, even create discrete graphics cards, which will be Intel-branded, which will be able to plug into your PCIe 4, or maybe even 5-slot by that time. But how all of this is going to work, and are they really going to push towards gaming that much? Probably, to be honest. I mean, who the hell knows? The industry is moving at such a pace at this point. I do wonder how it's going to work, though, with the licensing issues with the GPU. And I do wonder if that's one of the reasons that AMD do have, or have given, rather, Intel their blessing. Quite honestly, until more information starts surfacing on exactly what the projects are, because these are very broad stroke um, what's the word? Very broad stroke statements. Discrete graphics solutions for a broad range of computing segments is exactly the usage they're saying. But that could be anything from powering the latest games all the way down to, you know, being put in high performance servers uh, where virtualization and HPC and deep learning and AI are incredibly important, all the way down to something in between. So for example, uh, 3D rendering workload. So in other words, something like, uh, I don't know, Quadro. Or to put it in NVIDIA terms, it could be GeForce, it could be Quadro. Or it could be something that is perhaps a little different. Maybe Intel have some other plans that they're looking to, to do. Maybe perhaps they want to start getting more into augmented reality. Perhaps they want to change the very definition of a CPU. We don't know that. I mean, it's possible that they have the idea of perhaps even more closely uh, changing the CPU and GPU architecture so they're, they're more similar to one another. And obviously I'm just making stuff up on the fly here because no one really knows what they're going to be doing. But it's cool stuff. I think that's really what it comes down to. And I wish Raja the best. I, I truly do. Uh, AMD fans are feeling somewhat betrayed right now, which I think is a bit weird. It's like... You know, obviously he he hasn't betrayed the company. He just feels that this is the right decision for him. And, you know, it's like if you're working for a company, uh, it's like if you're working for, like, Coca-Cola, just for sake of argument, and then Pepsi came along and said, hey, we're going to offer you more money um, because you've done wonders for the, you know, for the Coca-Cola marketing. You know, we'll, we'll give you 25% additional uh, bonus on your salary. We'll give you an extra ten days a year holiday. We'll also increase your expense account, and we'll also give you a base salary of like uh, an additional, like you know, twenty percent. And on top of that, you can also have more autonomy. So in other words, you're going to have a higher rank on your job. You're not going to think, well, gee, I really like Coca-Cola. You're going to say, okay, then uh, I'm just going to be drinking as much Pepsi as possible. Obviously, unless you've got a really big vested interest, you know, unless you've got really good stock options or whatever, most people are going to go where the cash is, and that's just kind of how it is. With Kadori, he obviously did love uh, technology. He does. You can just tell the man loves technology. He, he It's blatant. It drips out of every word he says on stage. The only issue, and I've said this before, that Kadori has is he, he's a bit he doesn't have the showmanship of, let's say, Jensen Huang from NVIDIA. But that's what it is. And honestly, he's not the only one with that issue. Lisa Su, as much as I like the lady, she, you know, once again, very intelligent, uh, very passionate about what she does. 
But especially at the start, she's a lot better than what she was. But she can be a bit dry on stage. She's doing much better now, though, to be fair. Much better. Um, so, you know, that's that's definitely a good thing. Because ultimately, showmanship is incredibly important in this industry. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. But it is. So, and as I said, you can feel free to vote in the straw poll if you so desire. But with all of that said, let me know your thoughts on this one. Uh, as I said, it's a bit of a rambly video. Because quite honestly, we don't know enough information. I don't want to tell you this is the reason. So, I'm just kind of going through some of my thoughts on this. Anyway, with all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.